everybody. This is John Clark. Welcome to Take Off with John Clark. Please subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to your podcast. And we are hyped in Philly for opening day. It's been a while since I've felt this much juice. And Larry Boa, Philly's legend. I got to tell you, Larry, down at spring training, it's always great to see you down at spring training. And I gotta, I'm trying to add up the years. How many spring trainings is this for you now? <laughs> it's over 50. I mean, I've been, I've been going there. It's just like a way of life for me. I can hardly wait till after the holidays because then you get ready, go down the car. And I've been very fortunate health-wise to be able to still throw BP, hit ground balls. But you're right. There's a good vibe going on right now in our clubhouse. And uh, I haven't felt this vibe in a long, long time. And it's 10 years, you know, the playoff drought. So in your opinion, do you think this team is going to be a postseason team? I'd be shocked if we're not in the postseason. Uh, Unless, barring injuries, this team should get to the postseason. And not only get there, we should go deep. And I haven't seen a lineup like this in a long time. Our 80 team was deep. The 08 team was deep as far as top to bottom in the lineup. But now with the DH this is a tough lineup to navigate through, and I think opposing pitchers are going to find that out real quick. A lot of them found out in spring training, and I don't really like to judge spring training because a lot of times you're facing double-A pitching and triple-A pitching, but we have some guys on that team, John, that could swing the bats. So if you're filling out that lineup card, is Kyle Schwarber your leadoff hitter, or do you go middle of the lineup for him? Well, I think they're going to go. I, personally, I, I'd leave it the way it is right now. Schwarber, he gets walks. His on-base percentage is off the chart. He can hit. He can lead off the game, first pitch, home run. I'd leave it the way it is right now. The guy that really impressed me, I mean, they all impressed me this spring, but Castellanos, is, not only does he hit home runs, John, I look for him to be in the batting race title. This guy's a good hitter, and he's, he, has a good, he puts a good swing on the ball, stays in the middle of the field, uh, and him and Schwarber, they bring an edge to that clubhouse. We needed something like that different personalities than the rest of the guys, and I think that's really going to help out. I think Dave Dombrowski did a great job in getting those two guys. I think you bring up a great point because there was really nobody on this Phillies team with World Series experience and hardly playoff experience. You're talking about JT Real Muto and Gene Segura were two of the guys that had played the most games in the majors without making the postseason. Right. And I talked to JT last year. Uh, Archie Bradley brought the home run hat and kind of like brought some looseness. JT said, yeah, we're all kind of similar personalities. So do you think this edge that these guys are bringing, it really does affect the other guys on the team? Without a doubt. Not only does it affect the guys on the other team, but the, the, the potency of this lineup, if Harp doesn't do it or Hoskins doesn't do it, there's other guys that can do it. I mean, you go down that lineup and you got Hoskins hitting sixth or seventh. You got to be kidding me. This guy's a force in the lineup and we're that deep right now. Uh, but I, I see this team scoring a lot of runs, and as you well know, covering baseball, pitchers don't have to go out there saying, I can't make a mistake here, because if we get behind three to nothing, the game might be over. Three or four runs down right now, I wouldn't even blink my eyes right now, because this team is very capable of scoring five, six, seven runs every time they put the uniform on. And there's going to be games, obviously, where the pitcher shuts a team down, but I'm looking for consistency in this lineup from top to bottom, which I think we're going to get. And I think it's going to really help our starting pitchers, not maybe in the month of April, but once April's through and these guys build up innings, it's going to help them stay in the game a little bit longer. You won't have to go to your bullpen as often as we have been doing the last couple of years. I think the first month's going to be a tough one for everybody because pitchers aren't stretched out yet. So if you go Schwarber leading off, who you got in the two hole? You got Reese or you got JT? You got Reese, you got uh, JT, you got uh, Segura. You could throw any. It's a very flexible lineup. If you wanted to flip it, and you could put Segura at the top if you wanted to. Moniac's killing the ball right now. Uh, here's a kid that everyone was down on. I will say this: I've never been down on the kid. I know he's had some tough years, but I, I've watched this maturation process the last three or four years. He's getting bigger. He's getting stronger. He's starting to believe in himself. But you could flip this lineup anywhere you want, and, and you're going to have maybe uh, you could have maybe a Moniac hit ninth. Yeah. Or if Bohm's playing or, and Stott is really Showed a lot. Uh, this guy's got ice water in his veins, John. I mean, he's very calm up there. He really believes in what he does, and he's been very impressive. Yeah, you talk about Bryson Stott. It was fascinating to me. Joe Girardi said when he informed Bryson he was going to make his first major league team opening day, he was like, okay, thank you. And, and he didn't, like, go crazy. Is that Bryson? Yeah, he, he, this is, that's not fake. In fact, I, I, I understand that he went in to talk to Joe 
and said, is there any re way I can make this team if, if Didi's going to be the shortstop? And I guess Joe says, yeah, you can play a lot of different positions. Because I saw him play in the fall league, and I saw him play third. He did well. I saw him play second. Uh, this kid can play all over, which is an asset for us. And it's going to be up to Joe Girardi to get these guys at bats, and it sounds like he's got a good game plan going. Uh, he might play Stott one day at third, one day at second, one day at short. Bohm the same way. Bohm can play first or third. we got a lot of flexibility. Moniak can play all three outfield positions. You can DH Harp one day, DH JT. There's so much maneuverability you can do in this lineup, and that's why I think it's going to be a successful season. What does it do also, because you talked about the veterans on this team, when you do have the youth like Bryson Stott and Mickey Moniak coming up and basically making their major league debuts, not Mickey Moniak, but like to be on the opening day roster, what does that do for the veterans as well and just the mix of the team? Well, I'll tell you what, it, the veterans, when they see the young kids come up, it, 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 right away, it, there's instant energy with the young guys. That spreads. Whether you played 10 years in the big leagues, 15 years, when you see young kids coming up, you're going, man, this is nice. I got some, uh, these guys' kids got some energy. It's going to push me a little bit more. Uh, and these kids are very mature for young kids. But I think when you have that, that flexibility of having young kids, veterans, I call them veterans. Harp's 29. It seems like he's, <laughs> he's played 20 years in the big league. Yeah, he's like and LeBron. J you know. J yeah, JT's <laughs> another one that's 29 or 30. So those guys, they see these young kids coming up, and I think that gives them a big, t big boost. And the fact John Middleton went out and he went over the luxury tax, and I think if that doesn't get your clubhouse psyched up right there to say, hey, this guy wants to win, and everyone knows Dave, Dave Mabowski's uh, track record. He wants to win. That just spreads through your clubhouse. And right now, there's good vibes going through that clubhouse. So this lineup, you're talking about it. You even compared it with 80, and you compared it with 2008. You think somebody can get 40 home runs? Yes. On this team? Oh, I'd be shocked if somebody doesn't hit 40. Yeah? I think there's three guys on that team. I'm not saying they're all going to hit 40. Somebody's going to hit 40 on that team. Because, first of all, the park is not a huge park, <laughs> yeah. but these guys are strong. I mean, you got you got Haas, you got uh, Schwarber, you got Castellanos, you got Hart. you got all kinds of guys that can hit home runs. You can't pitch around anybody. you got to be careful who you when you pick your poison because the next guy up is just as potent. I think it's, you're going to find out Hart is going to find out it's going to be tough to pitch around him. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure pitchers are going to say, let somebody else beat you. We don't want Hart to beat us, but... There's a bunch of guys on deck that are chomping at the bit to get in the batter's box right there. Yeah, and last year when Reese went down, it was basically Bryce and that's it because right. some other guys were struggling. He only had, what, 84 RBIs last year in an MVP year? How many can he have this year with the guys that are in this lineup? Well, and, and if you remember last year, a whole bunch of those were solo home runs, right? Yeah. This year, I don't think there's going to be a lot of solos. I think there's going to be some people traffic out on the base pass, so... It wouldn't shock me to see Harp hit between 40 and 50 home runs. And, uh, uh, you know, he, obviously he'd be in the conversation of most valuable player once again. Yeah. Because this this lineup, you could pick three or four guys in this lineup right now, John, that you can say, hey, they could be possibly MVPs. Yeah, and, and Bryce, what really impresses me is, okay, he, he's the MVP. It seems like he's really settled into Philly and his role in Philly. And then... He had the most homers and RBIs in spring training in all of baseball. Right. So he has picked up right where he left off, and you get that sense he does want to win another one. Do you get that feeling? Oh, yeah. I, there's no doubt in my mind. Uh, th this guy wants to win another one, and he wants to win a World Series. I think that's the big thing on his mind right now. I want to win a World Series. Uh, he saw Washington win after he left there, and I'm sure that he was rooting for all his buddies, but he wants to actually have one of those uh, parade routes down Broad Street because – I've told him how great it was. He's seen it with the Eagles when they won the Super Bowl. I think he wants to experience that. That's, I hate to say it's his bucket list. That would be a great bucket list for him to go down Broad Street with another MVP. Yeah, and, and I, I liked that he kind of came out during the beginning of spring training and said, you know, it would be nice if we went out and got a couple more guys, and he named them. Oh. Now, now, they didn't get his buddy Chris Bryant, <laughs> No, <laughs> but, but for the same amount of money as Chris Bryant, they basically got Schwarber and Castellanos, but... Do you think Bryce does have that influence with the well, front office? I, 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 I'm sure John Middleton's a very shrewd businessman, but I'm sure that when he read these comments, he went, man, that might be a good addition to our ball club. <laughs> I thought when we got Schwarber uh, that that would be it, but then he went out and got the other one, Castellanos. I went, wow, this is impressive. So, 
And I will say this right now, and I don't know how it's going to play out. I really believe if the race is real tight, which I think it might be because there's three, well, the Mets, Atlanta, and us, don't count out Miami with that pitching. Yeah. Washington, to me, is like a rebuilding thing. But if you're in a tight race, I could see us adding somebody else at that break in, in, at the end of July, early August. Yeah, because you're already over the luxury tax. Yeah, and I'm sure going John for says, it. hey, I already went over it. Let's really go for it. Yeah. And w were you actually a little surprised that they did sign Castellanos after they got Schwarber? Not really, because you, as you well know, John, when you have some good players like we have, that window closes when you hit. 30's not old, but the way analytics and everything, they think 30, you're, you're heading downhill. And so I think they're thinking about that window, and they want that window to stay open a little bit, and that's why I think they added these two big bats. And, uh, you know, Knable, that was a big sign for us. Back into the bullpen, uh, he signed Wheeler last year. So we have some big-time players that hopefully they respond, and I'm sure they will. And the expectations are off the charts right now, and they should be. If you're a player, if you're a manager, if you're a coach, if you're a fan, you want expectations to be high. So about the lineup, because I was talking in the office last night, and you look at, like you talked about, Mickey Moniak could be hitting ninth. Yeah. I think a real key, if this lineup is just going to be unstoppable, is D.D. Gregorius. Because if D.D. gets back to what he was in 2020, I think he hit 10 home runs in just 60 games right. and hit around 290. If he is able to kind of regain that form, and he was hurt last year, then this lineup is just off the charts and maybe the best lineup in baseball. Do you agree? I, I agree. You know, and I've been reading all these uh, the so-called experts, and they pick who's going to win the division, who's going to, how many wins is this team going to get? We're not getting very much respect right now, and that that really bothers me because I'm I'm just thinking, what are they looking at? Because this lineup, like you said, it's as good as anybody's in baseball. And I, you take a look at our five starters. I'll take those five starters on any team. There might be teams that have maybe better one or twos, but if you go top to bottom, I'll take these five guys against any team in baseball right now. Health, to me, is the biggest issue for us. If we can stay healthy, I think it's going to be a fun summer here in Philadelphia. Yeah, you talked about the rotation, and Aaron Nola, he had a really good three-year stretch, and then the last two years just hasn't been himself he had a bad September this past year, and then he had the bad September game to finish the shortened season. Do you see the old Aaron Nola at spring training? What have you seen down there in Clearwater? I, I see a determined Aaron Nola. I love this kid. He works hard. Uh, he gives you everything he has. He usually goes pretty deep into the games. If you go back and look at the games he lost last year, there was always an inning where he'd give up a three-run home run. He'd be cruising, 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 scores two to one, two men on, boom, a home run. And there's some games last year. In all honesty, we've seen it. The bullpen blew some leads for him. So I, I look for him to have a big-time bounce-back year. I like the way he's throwing the ball right now. I mean, this is his, what, fifth opening day start for the Phillies, which is quite remarkable. Uh, I mean, he said five in a row, right? Yeah, and you talked about last year. He gave up a lot of two-strike home runs. Home runs that yep. just killed him. And you know what, John? Pitchers, they get out on the mound, they're like anybody else. And they get ahead one and two or zero oh and two, and he's I got to make a perfect pitch here, and you overthrow it or you get underneath a breaking ball and you leave the ball in the middle of the plate. He knows what he did wrong. Uh, you'll never hear him alibi. He's a professional from get go. I mean, this guy wants to win as bad as anybody. Very low key demeanor. If you walk in the ballpark and don't look at the scoreboard, you wouldn't know if he's winning ten nothing or losing ten to nothing. He's the same, and I think that's a good. Th those are good traits for a starting pitcher, and I, I expect him to have a tremendous year this year. I mean, if Zach Wheeler, runner-up Cy, Cy Young, Young, and Aaron Nola, and then Ranger. Zach Eflin, too. Zach Eflin looks great. And, and he's way ahead of schedule from his knee surgery. Way ahead. Yeah. And then and, and Ranger, Ranger, he's unbelievable. He, he shocked me. I'll be honest with you. I knew he was a pretty good pitcher, but what he did last year, unbelievable. And you got him there, and if, if – uh, if Gibson's your fifth starter, that's a pretty good five five man rotation because he gets a lot of ground ball outs. We got to catch the ball. I, th when people talk about our defense, John, just make the routine plays. Don't worry about great plays. If we make the routine plays, that's all we're asking for. And I think this team is very capable of doing that. You talked about the defense because that's everybody's you know Achilles' yeah, heel. Everyone thinks that's yeah for the team. So. I know if you didn't have this type of lineup, if you do make all those errors or defensive mistakes, it can really get to a pitcher, and then 
You're playing catch-up. You're playing catch-up, and everybody kind of sags a little bit. But when you do have the confidence of this lineup, does that have the ability to erase some of that in, in your mind when you're out there? No question. I mean, you, you can make an error, and the next guy hits a home run. And normally, if you didn't have the firepower that we have right now, they're going, oh, man, this could be a two-to-one game, three-to-two game. But those pitchers, same thing. They go out there and they say, if I make a mistake, I trust this lineup. Uh, you can make a few mistakes in, uh, if you're a starting pitcher and still get a win. And I think having the DH, Joe's, you know how that is. The strategy, when you don't have a DH and your pitcher gives up four runs in the first inning and he comes to hit in the fifth, say he settles in and the bases are loaded, you've yeah. got to jerk him out of there. Yeah. Now with the DH, you can let him go. Hey, he, he found his, uh, his niche out there. He's starting to throw strikes. We'll let him keep going. Maybe he'll go six or seven innings. You don't have to go to the bullpen and look for 15 outs every night. So it's a filtered down effect. When you score a lot of runs, it covers up a lot of mistakes. And down at spring training, Zach Eflin and the guys were talking about, we all can go 100 pitches. We can go seven innings. And how much will that take a little bit of the pressure off the bullpen? It'll take a lot. Because you keep going to that bullpen, and like I said, April's going to be a tough month, not for the Phillies, but for all of baseball, because a lot of these pitchers aren't ready to pitch 85, 90, 100 pitches. Uh, we're lucky we have two, at least two that can do that right now. But once they get their feet on the ground, I could see five of these guys going six, seven innings every time they go out there. And you're going to have bumps in the road along the way. Some guy's going to go an inning in two-thirds. You know how baseball is. Just like hitting, there might be a three-game series where we don't hit. Yeah. Just stay patient, people. Believe me, this team will hit over 162 games. But baseball is a funny sport. You have ups and downs, peaks and valleys, and you just got to maintain the course. And I really believe this team is, is on a mission this year. I really do. And I remember when you were managing, you would talk about in Philly, if you get swept in a four-game series, how it seems like it's like 16 games, <laughs> you know, because there's 162 <laughs> darn games. Well, and the two guys that we got, their makeup is, I don't think it's going to bother them if somebody boos. They're, they're mentally tough people. And we need more of that, and I think uh, Harp sort of settled in, like you said, getting the Philly attitude. Uh, Reese has gone through it. JT has gone through it. So no one's going to be caught off guard. Maybe some of the kids might be caught off guard. They haven't actually been through it, but we got enough protection in that lineup. Has hey, hey, don't worry about it, man. Things will be all right. You go for four tonight, they're booing you. Three hits tomorrow night, you get a standing ovation. <laughs> yeah. That's just the way it is. You got to love passionate fans, and we have passionate fans. Yeah, and it's interesting because you know Eflin is on the last year of his deal, so he's fighting for a big contract. Right. Aaron Nola, they have to make a decision about him after the season. Canabel comes in here, and he kind of said, "One year, I'm betting on myself." Do you like that you have that hunger with contracts? I love that, and you left off the other two guys, the shortstop and second baseman, are yeah. free agents yeah, too. Right. So for some reason. I mean, I know what the reason is. When you're on the last year of that contract, you sort of dig down deep and say, hey, I want to keep playing. So you're going to see guys do some things. You're going to go, whoa, where was this? So yeah. but we've got a bunch of guys on one-year contracts or they're going to be free agents. That's a good sign also. Yeah. How, about Mickey Moniak, because I like what you said about how you saw him from the get-go. Maybe he didn't have the size. He was a kid. Right. But I loved what he said this past year about he's watching his diet now. He's, he's really into the training. Does, a, does a, a switch go off at some point where a guy is just not getting to the level he wants to? And he says, you know what? I have to look inside. I like that accountability, but I have to change some things about what I'm doing. Yeah, I think he was very frustrated the way his last couple of years have been him personally. Uh, I thought he said, I've watched him go through A, double A, and triple A, and I think I've seen great improvement. But he's tough on himself, which I like that. You know, he, he'll look in the mirror and say, you know what? I got to do better. And he came to spring training this year, and he came with a little chip on his shoulder, which he got bigger and strong. When I say bigger, I don't mean heavy. I mean a lot stronger. Uh, he's running better. I think after a while, as you get older, you start worrying about your diet. You start worrying about your sleep, your sleep habits, and, and you realize that those are just as important as getting in the batter's box and trying to hit a 98-mile-an-hour fastball. And I think he sees what's going on here. The, the competition in center field opened up when Oduble pulled a rib cage. And he took advantage of it. And that's what young kids do. If you kick, you know, John Mc, Jack McKeon used to tell me, when opportunity knocks, kick that door down. 
And so far, that's what Mickey Moniak's doing. He knocked that door down right now. And he's got a hitting coach that, that studied all of his at-bats, and he found that, hey, simple little thing, move you closer to the plate. Uh, can a hitting coach, their new hitting coach, uh, really make that big of a difference? I think yeah, sometimes it's, it's maybe the different uh, verbiage that they say. But I will say this, and Mickey can, uh, he can vouch for this. Charlie Manuel tried to move him on the plate two years ago. <laughs> and, you know, when a kid's young and he feels his oats and everything, he's, yeah, I'm good, I'm good, don't worry about it. But two years ago, Charlie says, move on the plate, get up on the plate. Yeah, okay, okay. And for one game, he'd get up there, and then the next, you go up, watch him again, he'd back off the plate. So this just didn't happen. Yeah. But maybe it's a different verbiage, and maybe he said, oh, I get it now. I've had a couple of people tell me that, and you've explained it, why it's important. But Kevin Long is a very good hitting coach, and – uh People are going to see the uh, the rewards that he's going to give the fans because all these guys are hitting hitting on a high note right now. Yeah, but I, but I think you hit on it with Mickey because it just seems like he kind of had an awakening. Is there a certain point? Because you know, it's six years ago he was the number one overall pick, and 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 maybe like you said, you you have the frustration, but then he kind of had to look at himself and say, I'm going to take the teaching now, and I'm going to change some of the things I'm doing. I'm not just going to blame it on an organization. Right. Yeah. You know, John. The other thing, being a one one. First round, first pick, that bring, that, that's a tough tag to, to have to shed all the yeah. time. You're under the microscope all the time, no matter what you do. Well, you better do that. You were a 1-1. One, one. Why is this guy hitting 240? He's a 1-1. One, one. He should be hitting better than that. So I think he carried that around with him a lot. And I think finally he realized, you know what, that's over with. I got drafted first. I was the first player pick. Now i got to go out and do some things about it. And sometimes before you hit your stride, you got to hit rock bottom. And I think the last couple of years, in his mind, he felt, I know I'm better than this. And he went home during the winter, and he did something about it. How about Bryson Stott? We talked about him earlier. And, and when I was talking to him down at spring training, he talked about, I I'm amazed that he is still living with Bryce Harper because Bryce has two young kids. I know. And, and so he is still living with Bryce. I'm like, well, he probably would have moved out by now, but no. So how much do you think that influence, seeing how Bryce handles himself every day, and Bryce's work ethic, because he, he works on his fielding and right. all those things. He's a superstar. He still does all the work. Right. How much do you think that rubs off on Bryson? Oh, I think, I think it rubs off a lot. You know, I, the only thing I asked, I said, I hope he's picking up tabs for dinner. Because <laughs> yeah. I said, you shouldn't have to go to your wallet very often. Never. But uh, they're really tight, and uh, I'm sure his influence has been big for, uh, for uh, Bryson, because this kid, when he gets in the box, you're going to watch this kid. He's another guy. If he's 0 for 4, you wouldn't even know it. He's up there. He's nice and relaxed. He gives you good at-bats. He takes pitches. He's not afraid to hit with a count 0 and 2 or 1 and 2. Uh, he's going to go through some trials and tribulations. Nobody comes up here, John, and kills it right away. They might kill it for two weeks. You saw uh, uh, our our shortstop last year. I'm trying to think of his name. Uh, shortstop last year, man. You're, uh, yeah, you played short second. I was just with him. Uh, Maton. Oh, he came yeah, up, Nick Maton. Crushed fastballs for two weeks. Right, right. Couldn't get him out. You're right. Now all of a sudden this guy comes, they start throwing breaking balls, change up. Now I watched him this spring. He made some big time adjustments. He was hitting off speed pitches, hitting them the other way. So here's another kid that the scouting report comes out quick. And if they find a weakness, they're going to they're gonna go after that weakness. But I think this kid is smart enough and he's got enough ability to say, okay, this is what I got to do to be able to hit this ball up and in here, or I got to learn how to take it. But there's no panic when he gets in the box, man. He's really relaxed. You can go up and push him, and he's liable to fall over. I mean, <laughs> he's up there, and he's nice and relaxed. And I really like his demeanor, and that's why I think he's going to be a good player. So that brings me to Alec Bohm, because uh, a lot of people are like, what, what happened with Alec Bohm? Where, what's with Alec Bohm? Can he find his way back? Did they adjust to Alec Bohm, and did he just not? make the adjustments, or, or is it something I, else? I, I think it's a combo. I think last year his fielding affected his offense, and then before you know it, he wasn't getting hits offensively, and that would affect his fielding. And I just think he got in one of those uh, downhill spirals that things just didn't go right. This kid works. He's a good kid. He wants to be good. Uh, he's come on the last three or four games in spring training. They've changed some things in his stance. Uh, but I think this kid's going to be all right, I, I, you know, He's always hit everywhere he's gone, and that's been, been the biggest disappointment last year, his inability to come out of that funk. But I do believe the fielding had something to do with that, and he took a lot of that onto the field, into the batter's box. I think you're going to see a different bone. And I think this competition, whether you want to believe it or not, it pushes people. And he's, he, he's smart. He's a smart kid. He saw Stott taking ground balls at third, and he goes, 
hey, I better kick it in here. And the last week of spring training, he did a pretty good job. So you were down there at spring training the whole time. And I remember Reese Hoskins saying, there's just a different energy. Did you honestly feel that? I did. Did you really? I, I felt it from the very first time, uh, especially when they they signed Schwarber, you know. Uh, and then there was rumors about signing someone else, and you could feel it in the clubhouse. Hey, you hear anything? You hear? You know, at, working in the front office, you can't say it. You say, I haven't heard anything. <laughs> and, you know, I, we hear the rumors. We, yeah. we know exactly, but Dave's pretty good at keeping things close to the vest. And uh, But they were all looking every day. Who oh, are we going to sign? Are we going to sign anybody? I said, I don't know, man. We got a good team right here, what we have right now, but uh, it is, it's a different feeling. I see guys talking together in the clubhouse before a spring training game. They're in little groups talking. I hadn't seen that in a long time, so there's a good vibe going on there. How about for Joe Girardi? As a former manager, they obviously are going into this final year of his contract, and obviously there's going to be expectations. How would you feel if you're Joe going into a final year? Some say it's a lame duck. I see. I don't. I don't believe that. I think Joe really. He he he's been through it. He's been in New York. Yeah. He's won World Series. I don't think that bothers him. I think Joe wants to get the best out of his players. Uh, he likes our lineup. I know one thing. There's a hop in his step every time. You know, because we're there early in the morning, and there's been mornings the last couple of years where he come in and say good morning, guys. And now he comes. Hey, good morning, guys. What's going on? I'm going. <laughs> man, that lineup change really affected everybody. <laughs> but but Joe Joe's well equipped to handle this, and I don't think that bothers him one bit. And I don't think he looks at it as a lame duck manager. He's going to go out and give you everything he has, and let the chips fall where they may. This guy has he's been around the block. He knows what it takes to win, and I think uh, our team's in good hands with him running the show. So you know, a lot of people with baseball say. The game, there's not enough action. You know, we, we miss the base stealing. We miss hit and run. We miss just moving runners over. This team could have a lot of the strikeout, walk, or home run. They could. And, and, and don't be upset if we don't steal a lot of bases or put hit and <laughs> runs on. Because, as you said, they have the ability to hit them in the seats, but they also, there's a lot of swing and misses. We don't want to give away outs with this lineup. I'm sure there's going to be certain certain situations where Joe puts somebody in motion or lets somebody steal. we got a couple guys that can steal some bags. But I think for the most part, he's going to let these guys whack it around the yard. And uh, when you see the end of the season, you're going to see a lot of home runs on this side of the ledger for the Phillies. All right, well, you're predicting playoffs for the first I'm, time I'm in 10 years. I'm deep in the – I'm not just predicting playoffs. I'll be disappointed if this team does not go to the deep end of the playoffs. And if we get in – to the so-called dance, the World Series, I wouldn't want to play this team. I would not want to play this team. Got me fired up now. I'm ready to go, man. I'm All ready right. to go. I, I've seen enough of this mediocrity, and uh, it's been a long time. Uh, John Middleton's done his part. Dave Dombrowski's done his part. Now it's up to the players, and I think they're going to respond. I really do. Well, that's great. I think Philly really misses Red Octobers because we saw the crowds and oh, I know. just the city. And I remember that Shane Victorino Grand Slam against CeCe. And, and the place was fired up. It's just been missing the last five seasons. Well, you know, a lot of these players, have, even JT and Hart, they haven't seen this place electric yeah. every night. They've seen certain giveaway nights where it's packed. This team starts winning. That place will be packed every night. And it, there's a different vibe when you come out to that dugout and you hear these fans going crazy, it, it's very intimidating if you're the other team. I've witnessed it as a Dodger coach, but obviously I've been here forever. But when we played the Phillies in the playoff, there was an electricity in the air that I, I don't know if I want to be a visiting team coming in here. And out in L.A., they arrive in the second or third inning. And, and they, they go leave. home in the seventh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> By the way, I love that you are a right. California guy. Oh, I love it here. And that you live in the Philly area. This is your home. It's, it's like Dick Vermeil. Like yep. you guys decided this is, this is you. Well, this has been me for, since 1970. And I, I, I like to sort of equate what my mentality is with the city. It's a blue-collar city. And as a player, I went out and gave everything I had. I try to tell these young kids, just give everything you have. I'm not going to guarantee you they're not going to get booed, but for the most part, you do that every night, you're going to win these fans over, and they're going to be on your side. Well, you certainly did, and we appreciate the time, Larry. Nobody loves baseball more than Larry. Bell. I love I know baseball, that. and I'm looking forward to a great summer this year. I love it. Okay. Thanks for joining us. All right, John. Appreciate it.